Well, good morning, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. I want to thank the African Center of Strategic Studies for inviting me. Uh, I have always enjoyed coming to Washington and to the center in particular because it gives me an opportunity to meet with a lot of uh, future leaders of our continent here and it has also afforded me an opportunity that each time I travel uh, around Africa I happen to meet one or two faces, some I don't recognize, some recognize me, and some has facilitated my journey to make it easier. So I really want to thank the center for that opportunity. Now to talk about leadership, a very important thing, but the difficult thing is how to define it. It's so complex because if you ask people to define leadership, I'm sure you will have as many definitions as you have of leaders. So it is a complex thing, but it's also very important. Because, uh, like John Maxwell stated, that everything begins and ends with leadership. If things fall apart and the center cannot hold, it means the leadership is not holding properly. So it seems to me, and I think all of you will also accept, that leadership is very important. And that for you to have been selected by your country to come here, it shows they have seen the leadership potential in you. And as... Um, uh, I read in my military history that all of us have leadership built in us. The only problem is that some of us do not utilize that leadership. And, you know, uh, leadership is, as I've said, is very wide. Chief executive, soldiers, departmental heads, parents, politicians, are all leaders. So what do you require out of them? What you require out of them is to show the way for others to follow. In the security sector, I would attempt to define leadership as influencing people by providing purpose, direction, and motivation while operating to accomplish the mission and improving the organization. Accomplishing the mission and improving the organization is what I would want to put emphasis. Because if you do not improve the organization, then your purpose as a leader is defeated. I also want to uh, say that as a security sector leader, you have also requirement to influence your subordinates. Remember that yes, we have positions, we have ranks, and sometimes some of us make the mistake to believe that that your position or that rank that you have is all that matters. Yes, it is important. Yes, it helps you in performing your role, but you must, as a, uh, as a higher person, remember that you also have subordinates who are leaders. In the military, I would equate it better with because I spent 40 years in the military. So uh, please forgive my being biased. Uh, you have the section, you have the platoon, you have the company, you have the battalion and the brigade, and each one of them has a commander. 
So it is not just enough for you to look at yourself as a brigade commander and think everything begins and ends there. And also, the, it's important the role that the section commander or the platoon commander com does. So also in other fields of endeavor that you are working. You must also influence at your level those who are below you, and you must also allow those that are above you to influence you in the right direction, because there are two influences. Even uh, crooks or robbers, they have leaders, and they influence them, but in the negative way. So um, in the security sector, especially in our continent, Africa, I don't want to go into all the uh, security challenges in Africa. I'm sure all of you know about them. Um, the evidence of the challenges are civil wars. Um, we have insurgency. We have so many things. So they are not new to any one of you. So instead of us concentrating and lamenting over what are the challenges, let's look at how do we go forward to come out of these challenges. And I'm happy when Raymond was discussing this morning, he mentioned human capital. We have a lot and we are blessed in Africa with so many things, but the most untapped and, and develop thing I believe is human capital. And until we get it right, we will continue to have several ch uh, challenges. Um, if we don't get it right, as I say, we'll have challenges and our continent will still remain in a, such a volatile situation that we have today. So what are the type, we have to look at the leadership structure, we have to look at the capacity and what we want our leaders uh, this, uh, to do and how we can make these leaders effective. Um, I, one of the things is that there's big challenge we have even our government, and that translates sometime into our security sector uh, things, the patronage associated to government institution where a lot of us misuse government uh, facilities and government uh, property, believing that because we are the head, then we are government. But government is for the people. So everything that is there is not only for you, but is for the whole people that are working and serving with you. So for it to be, for things to be successful, government agenda must put the citizens, the people themselves at the center. And in the security planning, it must be the people, the providing security to the people, and uh, how do you do it? It's not that how much do we protect the regime. So what are the ideal effective leadership uh, things that I see happening in our security sector? I will start that if we want to get effective leadership, we must value the people. The People must be the center. We must appreciate. And for us who are leaders or emerging leaders like you, you must appreciate the people that you are working with. Knowing, coming from a, a country that has so many diverse uh, ethnic groups and tribes, I'm sure I, I, and some of you, how much, even if you are from Somalia, where you don't have ethnic city, you have uh, you have the, the dialect, and you have your landlords who are divided into clans. So there are really things that divide people, but you must value the thing and respect the diversity that you have. But you must have a shared value. You must 
share uh, that share value must have something that puts you in the uh, make everyone feel that he has something to contribute that he or she is good and has something to render to make that organization of yours very effective to achieve as i said the purpose or the goal or the objective that you were placed there to do and one of the things that you need most is trust you must begin to trust each other if you do not trust even your group that you are working with then it becomes a big challenge so as a leader you must show you must allow your subordinates to trust you and trust themselves and work as a team for the success of that your organization um communication is something else also i want to talk about it is very necessary that you give clear and effective you have clear and effective communication skills that provide a clear mental picture to your subordinates when you are giving them a task let them know and understand what you want them to do and let them also understand the importance of the play in that role that you want them to do what is the goal let me go back to where i know best the military if you are asking your battalion to capture a bridge the people must understand why do you want that bridge to be captured is it because you want your supply to go easily is it because you want the movement to be done more quickly so these are the things then the person will now be very glad say oh if i do this this is the advantage not only to me but to the whole group then it makes it easier for everybody to uh, try to be part of it the no knowledge of the profession how much do you yourself know your profession but it doesn't stop there how much do your subordinate know and how much are you willing to help your subordinate rise up to understand the profession do you know them yourself your subordinate do you know their names do you know what they are doing do you know their weaknesses do you know their strength because it is only then that you can fit the right peg you can put a square peg in a square hole but if you don't know them and you are guessing you will end up putting a square peg in a round hole and you know you are in trouble and it is very important especially in the digital age in my time in our analog days with the old ones you could find a second chance to do something but in the digital world time moved everything is very dynamic that you do not have time for a second chance so it is important that you teach your subordinates train them realistically so that they can achieve that goal that is required but how about you yourself do you have the knowledge and the skill did you get into your position because you deserve it because you are knowledgeable because you have been trained or you got there because your uncle was one time or because your tribe was this or because you have somebody that is pushing you and once you do not get you don't know yourself you have to know yourself know your weaknesses know your strong points and sometime as i learned later and i started doing it is peer to ask your peers to rate you to tell you what are those good points that you have so that you do not waste your time too much on the good points but try to build yourself in the area that you are weak because you are a leader and those behind you look up to you the people you are leading look up to you for leadership so you must know that you must have the knowledge and the skill mere knowledge without character makes a um, uh, this, the, the decision very dis- difficult character and supported by knowledge seriously limit the potential of a leader so you must have the character you must have the knowledge to perform the role that is required of you as a leader
And you must then develop yourself. Because if you do not develop yourself, it will be difficult for you to understand and develop your own organization. Focus on the inherent strength and then know the gaps that are there in your organization that you need to fill. And you need to study, increase your knowledge. Knowledge is power. So if you, have, uh, if you are very knowledgeable, you will have the power to do what is right. And exemplary leadership, I think, is every, is, says it all. You must show the example. You must develop value and a culture that those under you will look and want to follow. You must uh, never kill your people's spirit when they find out that you are that type of leader who will say, do as I say, but not as I do. If you want, back again to my whole life, if you want your men to run one kilometer, you as the leader must be in position to run more than one kilometer. You must be, follow me. No, oh, go run and when you finish, come back and meet me here. That is not leadership. I also want to talk on something in my career I found very important. Uh, delegation. Some of us are afraid, oh, if we allow people who are following us to do, they will make mistakes and the boss will not be happy. So we want to do everything. No, it's not good for you. It's not good for your health. And it's not good for the organization. Because when you are not there, how will the next person come? This is why it is very important that you delegate along the chain of command. If you are the boss, you are second in command, must be you must develop him or her to replace you when you are not there. If you don't do that, then you will find out that if you are sick and you don't come to office, the office shut down because you have not delegated authority to others. And it breeds mistrust because your subordinate will not trust you. He will say, oh, I mean, and if, lack of confidence. He will be afraid. Oh, what would the boss say tomorrow when he comes in and I've done this? Am I on this? But you are also stopping them to learn from mistakes because the best way we learn is from our mistakes. We will make them. But then when we learn from mistakes, we will never, it will be, uh, it will, will be difficult for us to repeat them. Remember that by building others, you are earning yourself more power and more respect. But if you do not build others, you will lack the power, you will lack the respect, and people will not wake up tomorrow and say, oh, that was my boss who really opened my eyes to know this, to do that. And in all this, there must be recognition and reward. But only reward, there must be sanction and punishment. When, you, when your subordinates do something wrong, punish not because you want to destroy the person, but so that it becomes a means of people to understand and to learn, not for destruction. And when you want to punish, don't punish your subordinates because you want to humiliate or uh, make the person, uh, others to look down upon him or her. No, you are punishing just as your own child. You are punishing to correct so that people don't make that same mistake. And the same thing, when they do something good, you must show recognition. You must give them a reward. There must be a reward for being good so that you encourage other people to try to do good. When you delegate, there must be a feedback. That is another challenge we have, the lack of feedback mechanism. How do you get a feedback of what is happening? Even you yourself, ask your subordinates to tell you how they feel about you. Um, it will be difficult, but honestly, if you create a good rapport and a good relationship with your subordinates, they will be able to tell you politely and honestly 
sir. This is what happened. I'll, I'll pause a little and tell you so, a little personal story. Um, I had the privilege to work with the chief of army staff when I was a major. I was a military assistant to him, and he later on became the president of Nigeria. And because of the rapport we had, uh, privately, if I have opportunity to see him, I will tell him, Your Excellency, this, 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 I think it is not proper, very politely. And one day I remember he told me, he said, Martin, I love your gut. And I said, thank you, Mr. President. Because I was honest to him, because I tell him what he needs to do without anything. He took the decision, but the, the best decision is based on informed decision. If you are informed, you have enough information, then you can make the best decision you want. You must, as a leader, educate yourself, as I've said. You must maintain an open door policy. Allow a growth and trust in your organization. Make it possible for your subordinates to see you and make it possible for you to create opportunity, especially those of you that are emerging leaders that you have opportunity to bridge the gap between the, those below and those at, uh, at the top. So you must have an open policy to allow growth and think of the collective uh, things. Like I've said, if you are told you are capturing that bridge and this is why you are doing it, you will look at the collective benefit not what do I stand to win, but what does the organization stand to gain from this? Don't look for cheap popularity. Don't. If somebody is doing something wrong, tell him or her it's wrong and be very firm, but fear to every one of you. Remember that no matter how good things are in your organization, there is always room for improvement. Because every success brings itself with new challenges that you need to overcome, overcome and be more effective. Teach your team to focus on the task to be uh, to the task they have, and let them start thinking outside the box. Not every time that this is the answer. No, sometimes you have to go outside the box to get the answer to your challenge. So let me, before I sit down, uh, talk about uh, what do I see about African uh, security sector? Is there any improvement? I have been lucky attending these courses, as I've uh, said, and seminar, meeting a lot of you. I begin to see there are changes. And I'm happy we are beginning to see we are cutting across all colonial boundaries before and uh, if I'm going to Niger, which is just north of Nigeria, yeah, I will be so afraid because I do not understand anything beside Bonju. So, but I've signed we are beginning to cross boundaries across Africa. We are beginning to understand that we have common challenge. That poverty does not know whether you are francophone or anglophone or anything. Ignorance does not know your tribe, whether you are Chikuyu or whether you are Hausa or whatever it is. No, it doesn't. So, and I'm also beginning to be happy to find out that our security sectors are beginning to become professional. They are beginning to look at national and citizen security, not regime protection. Uh, and what reminds me is what happened in Zambia and in other African countries, where people expect that the military will just jump. Oh, there's a vacuum. Jump, they want to become rulers. No. Even the military itself and the people are beginning to understand the rules of game and understand what democracy is all about. So we are, I've seen we are making progress. Democracy is gradually, gradually getting some roots in Africa. And, and I hope we continue to allow it flow. But there are challenges. Let's not deceive ourselves. There are still in the judiciary, there are places where cases are left forever.
And you know, justice delayed is justice denied. I remember in my country, a, a, a governor took a case to court, and by the time the ruling came, he has already he was already he has already died and has been buried five years before the ruling. What is the aim? Though he won the case, but he's already a dead man. Why do you delay it? So justice delayed, the delay is justice denied. There are the legislative arm. Um, there are so many ambiguous laws we pass loopholes so that people can exploit into those loopholes. We, some of our laws are so old and we are refusing to update them because updating them will mean blocking some of the things that we will require. And you that are seated, most of you that are seated here belongs to the executive arm. But the executive arm you all know that in our continent there is still corruption, there is still nepotism, and we have mediocres. When it comes to football, I mean soccer, we want to present our best team to play. But when it comes to sharing government offices, work, and things, we play with our second 11, and we bench the first 11 because they don't belong maybe to the right tribe, or they don't belong to the right religion, or they do not have a godfather that would push them to get to where they will go. We have those challenges. And the other thing I want to ask, how uh, to you to engage yourself if you as a security sector person is performing, how do the people think of you? I know in some of our countries, uh, the people rather go home and, and sleep and weep than to go to the police to report anything because going to report is just opening more danger to yourself. If that's the type of police you have, are you in that type of organization? Or as a military officer, or as a judge in the, uh, working in the court, do you need people to bribe you? Or do you go to kill other people in an operation because they are not part of yours? These are all the things that we have to. Well, I know we have culture, but how about the gender issues? You know that in all the crises we have in Africa, women suffer most. How many women are in our security organizations, in the security sector? How many of them? Yet, they are the ones that suffer most. How do you care for people? I saw it more in the poor where the women needed help, but most of the contingent, when I was the force commander, only 3% of a force I had of about 20,000 police and, and, uh, and military, only 3% were female. And yet, if you go to the IDP camp, the majority of the people in the IDP camps are women. And again, if you understand the challenges in those areas where there is a uh, mixture between men and women is not very common because of religious and cultural differences, you can then understand why we need to have a proper balance of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, gender. Do we have enough uh, female in position of authority? How can you talk, and I know, I can say for, I have not looked at the statistic, but I know that in Nigeria, there are more women than men. And yet, in position of authority, and those who make the decision, the women are the least represented. How can your majority have no say in what happens in your country, and you think you are in the right direction? I, I will want to say that women have their skills. They are good mothers. So they have sympathy on the way they approach issues are different from the way men do. So when you bring the experience of men and women together, just as it was stated here, if you bring the experience of all of us seated here, it's wonderful experience that you have. Even remove knowledge. 
I'm not even talking about knowledge, I'm talking just about experience. Women have the experience. So even if they are not knowledgeable, they have the experience that you need to tap as an organization. Let me round up by talking about lesson and advice um, for the next phase. What do we do? What is the way forward? What do I recommend? I would say that we need to provide resources. This is what I personally found when I was in the position of authority as chief of defense staff and chief of army staff. And when I was also a force commander and a deputy force commander in Sierra Leone, what is the problem I noticed is that we give people uh, challenges, we give them tasks, but we don't give them enough resources to do it. We don't match resources with the task you are giving somebody. Yes, as leaders, you must be innovative, but there is a limit where you, uh, renova uh, innovation can take somebody. You must give people the basic resources to accomplish what you want them to do. There must be, as you go back, and I hope you will learn, I'm happy you are going to have simulating exercises. When you get back, there is need for all the security sector for uh, sector in uh, security sector leaders in your country to have some sort of exercises uh, stimulating exercises map exercises something to the future to see what you need to do in those exercises, it will become clear where are the weak links, where are the gaps that you need to fill so that you work as a team, not parallel, that everybody, the custom is this way, the immigration is here, the police is here, the gendarmeries are there, the army is going this way, the navy is that way, the, everybody is just on parallel lines and you never meet. You must cross-check you must be, there must be a way to coordinate and know each other. This can be done easily within training. I'm happy that there are some of you representing organizations like the AU or regional bodies uh, in, or in Africa. I will begin to submit that our ECOWAS, SEDEC, and the rest organization should begin to think of doing what is happening here our emerging leaders, we should train them at home. This should be taking place in Gabon, or it should be taking place in Haboroni, or in uh, Dakar, or in Tunisia, Tunis, so that we have more people to attend. And you can then ask America or other countries to assist in training, because it's good to be in America. I'm not uh, against it. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we are holding this in our continent, the money to bring everybody to America will be, le it will be less when you are taking everybody to a continent in Africa. And then we can have more people. Every, maybe this can take place two, three times a year. And then the gap, the knowledge, and everything will help us grow. Then if we want for comparison, to compare what happened in America, we can have a, a smaller group to come here to do it. So I have given that as a challenge to those of us from the uh, regional bodies to think about it. Gender is a thing that we really have to. I believe that women need more leadership position in our country. They, especially when you come to protection of civilian and community policing, we need more women. And they will be more effectively and efficiently done if we have them more in that area. I would suggest if you don't have a role model, please get one. Each one of you must have a role model. Somebody you hope to be. I remember I was reading a book, Clinton, when he saw John Kennedy, President Clinton, when he saw John Kennedy, uh, President Kennedy at the age of 12, he said, I want to be president. And he walked himself and he was president. So find somebody as your role model. 
emulate the good part of that person and i'm sure you will be able to be another mandela or whosoever you see as your model but look for a role model i will suggest i selected a role model that almost put me into trouble so be careful um i was asked who was my role model when i was in Darfur. i forgot that i was in uh, sudan and i said general Patton. Uh, from the U.S. Being an old armor officer, I love General Patton. And then I made the second mistake of saying Sharon in, of Israel. And that almost, uh, the whole mission was shaking. But, and I was clear to my interview, I said, I like General Sharon, a person as a military officer, not a politician. I don't like him as a politician. But unfortunately, that didn't come out. What came out was that he was my uh, one of my role models. So be very careful. Um, again, you must create your own. You as a person must, and I say must, start to mentor somebody, and you must look for somebody to mentor you. Um, I'm concluding. I grew up with my grandmother, and that is she there. Um, and in the other picture, the, the person down in white is me in 1963. And that is my grandmother there. Those are the grandchildren. And what it was only with hindsight that I now begin to understand what role model and what uh, a mentoring was for our grandmother. She was old, as you can see, but she loves cooking. And when she's going to cook, when she's going to cook, she will send this group, you go and bring firewood, this one, go and set the, wash the pot. This one, go and bring this ingredient, go and bring water. And each one of us was tasked. And at the end of the day, she will end up preparing a food that we shall all enjoy. Then I, it was later part, I said, oh, so what my grandmother was doing, she was dividing tasks to each one of us. And she was uh, giving all of us a role to play. And that food, if all of us did not play our role properly, the person with the firewood did not bring firewood, the person to look after the fire did not, or the person that will make the ingredients and cook the food did not, will not have food to eat. So everybody has a role to play. And I always remember what my grandmother used to say. She will say, one of my cousins, she will say, you sending you is just, I will, my, I will not walk there, but my, my mind will not be at rest. And that is the feedback. She, because nine out of 10 cases, my cousin will not do the right thing that our grandmother won. You are getting the feedback from her. You are not doing well. That is the way things should do. So you should find a role model. I've seen that in my grandmother. And you should have a mentor. She mentored us to know we have to contribute to bring success of food on the table. Every one of us have to play his own role. So I have seen uh, those uh, issues. She told us how to delegate. She now started delegating. You go and do that. You go and do this. But I also see um, leadership at your level as a doctor in the medical field. Doctors match problem with solutions. So you as a leader, you must match the challenges and the problems of your organization. Don't weep over them, find solution. And as I've said, sometimes you have to think outside the box to get the solution. The doctor examine his patient one by one, know them, know from the symptom and from the discussion. He will now be able to know what is wrong with the patient and prescribe a medicine. So the same thing, as a leader, you must know your subordinates one by one.
You must know the difference between them. What are their strong points? And then you now know how to deploy A to this place and B to that place. You now know that ah, uh, this person needs more mentoring to be able to perform. So you must see yourself as a medical doctor uh, doing that. Finally, you must be a good bridge builder. You must build bridges, especially my most of the high top people in most of our African countries today belong to my generation of the analog world. Most of you are of the digital world. So you must be bridge between the young people in your organization and the old people like us on the top. You must be the bridge builder. And once you don't build that bridge correctly, it will fall. People will fail inside the river or anywhere that bridge is. But if you build it correctly, you will bring a good communication between the lower group and the senior group. You will bring a good experience for the organization and for the sister organization that you may have to work with. The custom needs the police, the police need the custom, the immigration needs the police, the, everybody needs each other. But if we do not build bridges and we stay where we are, and you that have this opportunity to not become good bridge builders, then the organization will suffer. And if the organization suffer, the people, the citizens that are supposed to be the center of everything we are doing will suffer. So I will say you count, you should count yourself very lucky to be here. You will make new friends, you will make new uh, colleagues, you will have a good network when you live here. You can people you can com communicate and ask questions. I remember uh, I had that experience. Some of the friends I met here in uh, New York when I was in NDU, some I met in other organizations and meetings. Um, one of my good friends, uh, Gen General Fall from Senegal, there are too many Fals I know in Senegal. Uh, I mean, uh, Abdullahi, Abdullahi Fall. Very good friends, we communicate. And then Babakar Gay, guy who was in uh, Congo when I was the fourth commander in, uh, in Darfur. We, when we have problems, we phone each other, we compare notes, we ask opinion, and we work as a team. And it all happened because of the opportunity of knowing each other when we are younger. So this is an opportunity for you. You are getting, keep the relationship. You will need it and you will use it. And I hope I will still be around for you to come to say, yes, I did have the opportunity and I have used it. My final word, my final word, if you do not have a role model, have one. If you are not a mentor, mentor somebody. If there is nobody mentoring you, please mentor somebody. Thank you.